So as well as our import, transform and rotate tools, we also have our structure menu, we have our optimize menu, we have the split, our target and our export menus. Next, I'll be discussing what our target menus display. So the first thing I want to explore in the Cheek Space control panel is your target. So I'm going to scroll down and as you can see here, we have the number of triangles, the number of vertices and the number of individual objects that make up the model in this scene. So what we want to do is lower these three numbers as much as possible. You may be wondering what triangles are. In this case, I'm going to select our outer casing and turn on our wireframe. This is inside the structure menu. So I'm pressing show wireframe. And as you can see, the object is made up of a latticework of different triangles that wrap around to create that overall shape. So as a limit on the triangle count, we like to say at Jig Space to try and stay under 500,000 triangles. And in this case, because it's quite close to that number, I'd like to lower that as much as possible. It's also important to take into consideration how many models you're going to have in the Jig Workshop. If you're just featuring this model, you may not need to perform any further optimization. But if you intended to have, for example, three of these models in the scene, that would raise the triangle count to about a million five hundred thousand. And then you would start seeing a little bit of performance issues in some of the older devices. Now, speaking of devices, we have the option to swap it from the desktop version to the iPhone 7 to 8. And if I do that, as you can see, we now have a warning letting us know that this triangle count is pushing the limits of the device and you may experience a little bit of lag when using this object in your scene. So the first thing I want to optimise in my target is the number of objects in the scene. As you can see, I currently have 42 objects and I want to lower this number so what I need to do is group some of these objects. To do that, I'm going to select this bar here. And if I zoom in, you can see that it's got an orange highlight around it. That just shows that it's currently selected. And if I press shift, I can multi-select and join these three bars together by going to structure and then to join. And now when I press join, you'll see that the number 42 will be lowered down to 40. Now that these objects are joined in my scene, if I want to move them around in the Jig Workshop, as you can see, they'll be treated as a single sub-object. Now it's important to take this into consideration and to think about how you want your objects to be animated and how you want them to be textured or given materials in the Jig Workshop. For instance, if I zoom around to the back of this hairdryer here, I have these two screws. Now, because I'm not moving them around much in the Jig Workshop, and I also want them to have the same silver material, it's inefficient for these to be single objects in my scene. So they're prime candidates to be grouped and joined together. So again, I'm selecting the screw and then pressing shift in order to multi-select. And with both of them selected, I'm going to structure and I'll press join. And again, if you watch the target of the objects, that will be lowered down again. Now it's important to remember that there are also objects hidden inside this model here. I'm fully aware of those. So I'm going to select this outer cage thing and press hide selected. And that'll reveal for me some of the objects that are hidden inside the hairdryer. So there are a couple more objects in here that I'd like to group together. This is because they share the same material in the Jig Workshop and they also don't move around in my scene. So I'm selecting this box, this box here and this one here. 
And again, I'm pressing join. And now I've hidden some objects in my scene, for example, the outer casing and the barrel to the hair dryer. So what I want to do is show my currently hidden objects. Now, if you look over here, it says that there are two objects currently hidden. So I'm going to show all. It's important to always press show all before exporting your object from the scene to make sure that you have everything selected. So if I scroll down, you can see that we've already gone from 42 objects down to 37. I would recommend when working with your own models that you continue on from here. But for now, I'm going to move on to the next section of the optimization process. Sometimes when you import your model into the blend scene, you'll discover that your model is joined together as a single object. So if I move this around, you can see that it's in one piece. In this case, I would recommend starting off by cleaning up your mesh. So I'm going to go to the Optimize menu and press Clean Up Mesh. Next, I'm going to select my model and go into Edit Mode. As you can see, we're now in our wireframe. I can go and press 1 in order to show my vertices, press 2 to mainly show my edges, or press 3 to mainly show the faces of this object. And now I'm just going to keep it on 2 so I can easily see what's happening. So I want to separate out my objects in a similar way to how I was grouping the objects before. So with my cursor hovering over this main casing, I'm going to press L. And as you can see, we've got our linked menu in the bottom left corner. I recommend setting it to the normal setting. So with this selected, I'm going to go into the Duke Space Control Panel and press Separate. And now when I press Tab or go back into Object Mode, this outer casing is now separated out from my model. And I'm going to continue on with this so that I can separate out the different parts of my model. So what I need to keep in mind in this situation, as with the grouping I was doing before, I need to consider what materials I want my objects to have and what kind of movement I want them to have in my scene. So the outer casing, I want to keep a white plastic, but the end of my hair dry nozzle is something that I would like to be a dark rough plastic. So it's useful for me to select this and separate it out. So with this selected, I'm going back into edit mode. I can also press tab and that lets me go into edit mode too. And again, I'm hovering over this object and I'll press L and normal is automatically selected because we pre-selected that before. So with this fully selected, I'm going to go to separate. And if I were to press tab, you can see that this front nozzle piece is now fully separated too. So I would continue on from here and continue separating out my objects until I had them into workable groups for editing in the Duke Workshop. Another option we have when you import your model and you discover that it's fully joined together as a single object, for example, if I move this around, you can see that it acts as one group, is that I can go to our edit mode. And if I press A, it'll select the whole object. And we have an option to separate all of the individual meshes in our scene. So if I press this, back to object mode or I press tab to go back to object mode. Every piece of my mesh is now fully separated and I can begin the process of grouping my model back together the way I was at the beginning of the class. So it's simply a matter of now selecting my pieces, for example, this outer casing here and this casing here, and I can press join and they will be joined together as a single object group. 
So you just need to go around and group these objects. Something to keep in mind again is how you want your objects to have materials in the Jig Workshop and how you want them to be able to move in the Jig Workshop. So it's always important to keep this in mind when grouping them together.